What is up guys? My name is Ryan Suze 18 on the Ryan Suze 18 Forever channel and this is my WWE WrestleMania 29 review. Well, let's get things started. Last night in New Jersey it was WrestleMania 29. Um we're gonna start off with a very great intro. Um talking about um um Superstorm uh, Sandy, um, you know, how it hit uh New Jersey and all that and all that uh, you know, tragic stuff. Um pretty much bar none that freaking stage was amazing. Um the um that big stand that they had above the ring um, with the Statue of Liberty above, that was pretty sick. Um, so we start off the night with Sheamus, Randy Orton, and Big Show going up against The Shield. Um, a pretty good match, I had to say. Um, Sheamus was pretty much uh, getting manhandled by The Shield, but would come back, um, rip off Dean Ambrose's shirt, um, and also rip off uh, Seth Rollins' shirt as well. Um, Orton... Um, um, would be the one to get tagged in as Sheamus was trying to go for the tap for the Big Show. The Big Show was getting upset, and um, pretty much um, at the end of the match, when Randy Orton pulled off with the victory for the team for his team, uh, Big Show knocks out both Sheamus and Randy Orton. So Sheamus, Randy Orton, and the Big Show are your winners. Then we have his Mark Henry versus Ryback. I thought this match would be a little bit better, um, considering that you know there's two big superstars, but apparently that didn't really fall into place. Um, but anyway, um, freaking, I mean, the the chance of Feed Me More were epic in that 80,676 people at uh, MetLife Stadium. Um, it was unbelievable um, to see Ryback to do the shell shock on Mark Henry. Um, the first uh, the first time Ryback tried to um, hit the shell shock on Mark Henry, uh, Mark Henry fell back on him. And uh, that's how Mark Henry pretty much got off with the victory as um, Mark Henry would, would just land right on top of Ryback. As Mark Henry would try to would uh, grab on the ropes and pretty much, you know, fall on top of uh, Ryback's back, and then would roll him over for the one two three. Um, Ryback um, was still on the ground as Mark Henry would try to go back into the ring, and um, try to do more damage to Ryback. But Ryback would get up, hit the shell shock on Mark Henry, and then the Phoebe Moore chance would uh, electrify that whole crowd at MetLife Stadium. Then we have the WWE Tag Team Championship match between Team Hell No versus Dolph Ziggler and Big E Langston. A pretty good match, I have to say. Um, damn, I mean, when you saw Kane in HD, he looks freaking skinny as hell. I mean, my uncle wasn't even telling me, was like, is that even the real Kane? But it is Kane, it is Glenn Jacobs, so that's pretty much it for that. Um, a pretty good match between the two. Um, and, uh, you know, Kane uh, pretty much dominated Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler had his moments in the match as well. Biggie Langston came in pretty much dominating both Daniel Bryan and Kane. Um, but Kane would hit the chokeslam on Dolph Ziggler as Dolph Ziggler would try to hit Kane with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And then Daniel Bryan would hit the um, the soaring headbutt, uh, famous by, you know, uh, the late but great but murderous uh, Chris Benoit. Um, and so we have Team Hell No winning that one and retaining their WWE Tag Team Championships. Then we have his Chris Jericho versus Fandango, or Fandango, Fandango, whatever you want to call this jabroni. Um... Pretty much Chris Jericho takes control of the match throughout um, the match. Um, Fandango just kept on dancing throughout the ring. I mean, he hit some pretty impressive moves as uh, Jericho would uh, try to uh, um, hit Fandango out where he was on the ropes to do the uh, you know uh, flying drop kick to him. Um, he would reverse that and hit him with the um, with a side kick to the head uh, to knock out Jericho. And uh, Fandango out of nowhere hits the roll up and uh, pretty much. Chris Jericho loses to Fandango, so Fandango, or Fandango, whatever you want to call him, is victorious on his WrestleMania debut. Then we have the P. Diddy performance, um, such songs as um, I'm, I'm Coming Home, I, I can't really remember the rest of them, but um, a pretty good performance from P. Diddy throughout um, every song at the end, uh, the fireworks would go off, um, which was pretty cool. Um, I mean, the fireworks were actually amazing at WrestleMania, I have to say, for every match, um, especially um, in the Undertaker versus CM Punk match, that was uh, pretty epic. Um, encounter with all the you know fireworks, especially going all the, all the way around the uh, MetLife Stadium Arena. Anyway, then we have the world title match. We have Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter, um, pretty much cut a promo before the match, talking about how the streets of New York City and and New Jersey are, are filled with immigrants and all that stuff. And then Del Rio's music hits, you know, his with his remix, um, of his uh you know song, um, whatever it's called, I forgot, but um. Alberto Del Rio pretty much um, um, takes control of Swagger. Swagger has his moments in the match. Um, 
Alberto Del Rio hits with the cross arm breaker, and pretty much Z Z Swagger has no choice but to tap. And Alberto Del Rio is still your world heavyweight champion. Then we have is the Undertaker versus CM Punk. My boy, the Undertaker, the guy, you know, who you know made me start to watch wrestling along with The Rock, um, who who shirt I have on right now. Um, the Undertaker, who is twenty and zero, and CM Punk trying to be the one. Uh, to defeat The Undertaker. Will, would it happen or would it not? So let's get started with this match. The Undertaker pretty much is getting dominated by CM Punk. CM Punk hits the old school on Taker. Um, and uh, pretty much Taker had his moments in the match as well. Um, but CM Punk would try to go for the uh, Macho Man diving elbow drop onto the announce table. At first I thought, you know, Undertaker's going to move. He's going to move. And then he would actually hit... Um, um, the Undertaker, but very awkwardly, and the table didn't even, like, break, so that was, like, kind of a table botch. But more more or less said, uh, the referee almost went to up to a 10 count as Undertaker was trying to scramble back into the ring. Um, Undertaker pretty much, you know, those back and forth punches, you know, he's the best striker in the game, as, you know, uh, Jim Ross always says, um, which he is. Um, and, and pretty much the, just, you know, CM Punk had his moments in the match as well, I mean... He hit the, the GTS on, um, on the Undertaker. Undertaker would kick out. Um, he would try, uh, um, he he, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, freaking, as Undertaker would um would set up for the last ride. Um, CM Punk uh grabs the urn. Well, actually, Paul Heyman throws him the urn, and and uh, as the referee would uh, be put down, and pretty much uh, hits the Undertaker with the urn. The one, two, three, but. This cocky ass son of a bitch would actually put the Undertaker's hands on top of each other and do the, uh, you know, with the tongue. I mean, I mean that's just disrespect. I don't know, but hey, but CM Punk, hey, he's that just that kind of heel, and he pulls it off very well. So I can't really, uh, really complain about it. But anyway, so pretty much Undertaker gets back up, friggin', um, as Undertaker um was getting applied the uh, Anaconda voice, Undertaker's eyes just lit up. And uh, pretty much Undertaker would just go on the attack. Undertaker would hit the tombstone for the first time in the match. I thought it was over. I was like, shit. Because as soon as CM Punk um, hit the GTS, um, the Undertaker just fell back into the ropes and then just picked up, picked up freaking CM Punk and then tombstone. Him. And then I was like, one, two. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. The streak could have been 21 and 0. But then um, <laughs> after that, excuse me, guys. Um, um, pretty much the Undertaker would go berserk, hitting, hitting a. Uh, um, CM Punk with the choke slam, and then finally would hit him with the tombstone pile driver, and um, pretty much rolls his eye back backwards and sticks out his tongue for the one, two, three. Undertaker's twenty one and zero at WrestleMania. Um, Undertaker would go outside and grab the urn and do the ultimate tribute to Paul Bearer. So Taker, Paul Bearer is very proud of you. I can guarantee you he, he is. He was looking down at you, very proud that you went twenty one and zero. And uh, we'll see who your next opponent is next year if you actually decide to return or just retire. Um, Undertaker is one hell of a superstar. Um, you know, he's 48 right now. I mean, he has a history of, you know, hip problems and back problems. I mean, it's it's, it's bad for Taker, but hey, but he still gets the job done. I mean, sure, he looks kind of weird, you know, with the mohawk, but it looks cool on him as well. Um, but Undertaker's 21-0. Um, I don't see anyone else beating the streak. I mean, if John Cena tries next year, then let him try. Um, but personally, in my opinion, Undertaker should keep the streak. The reason why is because at least when, you know, McMahon actually has his whole Hall of Fame building, it would be, you know, it says the Undertaker, you know, the un only superstar in WWE history to have an undefeated streak and to never be beaten at WrestleMania. Just to show the prestige of the granddaddy of them all known as WrestleMania. But anyway, next we have is Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. What a hellacious match. This no-holds-barred match. Probably match of the night, I have to say. Even it was a little bit better than Brock versus Cena later on in the night. Um, and uh, pretty much Brock Lesnar would suplex Triple H right through the freaking Spanish announce table. Unbelievable! I was like, holy shit! Which is why I posted on Facebook. I was like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? But um, uh, pretty much uh, Brock Lesnar would take control of the match a little bit into the match. Shawn Michaels would actually try to come in to super kick Lesnar, but Lesnar hits the F5 on HBK. Um, Triple H, I mean, uh, these guys use everything. I mean, they use the steel steps, they use sledgehammers, chairs. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit into the match. So pretty much uh, Triple H um, um, actually hits the Kimura lock on, on Brock Lesnar after he hits him in the cojones, you know, goes for the low blow. Um, 
And it would hit him multiple times. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. Like, it was multiple times um, that Triple H tried to apply the uh, Kimura lock. Um, there was this one time where, or actually twice, where near, near the end of the match where Lesnar would actually slam um, Triple H into the uh, bottom uh, part of the uh, steel steps. And I uh, kept on applying the Kimura lock. I'm like, damn it, dude, just tap, just tap. And then out of nowhere, freaking Triple H grabs the sledgehammer, nails, nails freaking Brock Lesnar right in the skull. And then um, would hit the pedigree on the steel steps to get the one, two, and three to get the victory and to still have his wrestling career. So at the end of the night, you still have, oh, by the way, that's my dog in the back. But anyway, Triple H it's, still has his wrestling career, so congratulations to Triple H for pulling off the victory. And also, I forgot to mention that uh, that that Paul Heyman would get laid out with the sweet chin music from HBK, so that was pretty cool. And then you had, you know, Triple H and... Shawn Michaels hugging, saying, you know, you got, you did it, bro, you did it. And, you know, a good way to uh, end that kind of a match. What hellacious match, I had to say. Um, then we have the main event, twice in a lifetime. You have the WWE champion, my boy The Rock, going up against the C-Nation leader, the Fruity Pebble, whatever you want to call this guy, John Cena. Um, last year, at, uh, you know, at Sun Life Stadium, you know, in Miami, Florida, The Rock would pull off um, the victory at, against C Cena and you know would claim victory over Cena for the next year. Would this happen again or would it not? So going into the match, we have this big reaction uh, between uh, you know Cena and Rock. You know the boos for Cena and then the cheers for Rock. Almost pretty similar uh, compared to last year. Um, but what hellacious match! I mean the Rock bottoms being reversed. Um, the Rock bottoms being hit. I mean the friggin' Attitude adjustments being hit, um, the STS trying to be locked in, I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was a little bit better than their match last year, I had to say, because The Rock, you know, had just come back fresh from, you know, doing movies and stuff, so he really didn't have a lot of uh, wrestling experience coming back, um, you know, to the wrestling business, but, I mean, this this match was barn on a great match. Sadly, though, the uh, you know, The Rock would actually lose to Cena, which kind of pissed me off, but... At the end of the day, I mean, you have to let Cena win. He is the face of the company. I, as much as I hate Cena, I do respect Cena. I have to say, for all the work that he does, like you guys saw it, if you guys watched WrestleMania, you know, you saw him, you know, talking about the Make a Wish Foundation. I mean, I respect Cena for that. I really do. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I respect John Cena, but I just don't like him. I don't like his character. I don't like his mic skills. His wrestling skills, bar none, suck. I mean, it's true. He, ha he only has five moves. I mean, for God's sakes. I mean, the only thing he has is like the freaking suplex. He has the five knuckle shuffle. The attitude adjustment, I mean, come on, the leg drop and what else, I mean, I don't even know. Like, dude, like, come up with a new character, I mean, Vince, I mean, even if you want to keep him face, just at least change up his character a little bit, I mean, not, not, no more of this hustle, loyalty, and respect, um, crap, but anyway, going back into the match, uh, The Rock versus John Cena, The Rock would actually lose to John Cena, John Cena is your new WWE Champion, at the end of the night, you have John Cena and The Rock, you know, giving each other a handshake and a hug, and, um, pretty much celebrate um, the victory at the top of the entrance ramp to end WrestleMania 29. So this has been my WWE WrestleMania 29 review. What were your thoughts on WrestleMania last night? I know I'm doing it a day later, um, so I'm sorry about that. And also, what do you think about my new uh, camera? Um, it's not really a new camera, but I'm actually using my iPhone 4. But um, what are your thoughts on WrestleMania? What do you think is going to happen tonight on Monday Night Raw? Leave all your, all, all your comments down below. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at, at RyanSuz18. And uh, on Facebook, at RyanSuz18 as well. And also on Instagram. I also have an Instagram now, so uh, at RyanSuz18 as well. So um, let me know your, your thoughts on WrestleMania. What were your thoughts? What do you think is going to happen next year? Do you think The Rock versus Brock will happen? Do you think Cena versus Taker will happen? All your qu comments go down below. Until the next time, guys, I'm out. Deuce.